Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to be doing a disassembly on this AY AY3M. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing because those interactions are getting help me get seen by the YouTube algorithms, help the channel grow. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, link tree link down below will take you to all of my socials, including my Discord. Stop by and say hello. And the join button down below may not appear on some Apple devices, will take you to channel memberships. Ultimate level of support for the channel, 99 pence a month. Really appreciate it, massively, massively appreciate it. Re totally optional. Thank you very much. So moving on then, we have got this AYAY3M to do a disassembly on, and it is a bit of a weird mixed bag of what the hell. Um, so it is appears to be mostly AK based. It has got a rubbish battery cover and very poor battery compartment. Uh, it's got whatever that is, and uh, we're gonna have a look at what's making it tick inside. So first thing we're gonna try and do is figure out the handguard, what's going off. So. In fact, we'll start here at the front. We'll have a look at this. So I'm just going to see if my Tox 6 will purchase in there. It will. And that is loose as well. So is that going to come off? Do I need to fully remove that? So that little grub screw, it was a Tox 6 or T6 screw. Uh, so I'm just going to unwind that. Now I can see that it just literally just gives me a barrel. There is no thread, it, even the outer barrel is coming right first to the end. So that is obviously something to think about and that grub screw pretty much had to come fully out for that. In fact, do you know what? I suspect I might need to leave that off because I suspect things are going to get stranger from here. So next thing I'm gonna do, is we're going to see if we can remove this handguard here. Now I'm going to try a T8. No, that's too small. Let's go a T10. T10 is hitting the spot. So I've got a Torx 10. It's undoing a screw there. And that's stopped coming out a fair bit. So there's one screw that came out of there. I'm hoping when I undo this side, that's going to release this little handle. It does look like getting a little bit wobbly. Nope, not quite loose enough yet. There we go. Now, will that come out? No, but that's suddenly become a lot more loose. It feels like it should come out. Looks like it's cast as a single piece. Okay, so we're gonna remove these screws next then. These two Phillips heads here. So there's one. And there's now that should I don't even know what that's done let's get those screws out there there's one screw two now there's another screw there does this whole assembly just slide off that looks like it wants to come off. I wonder if I have to take this off. Right, I'm gonna try this screw next on top. No, that's too big. I guess I'm hoping a T8. So now, there's a T8. Next option then is to drop that front pin out there and see what happens. So I'm just going to take this off camera. It looks like teeth are on this side. I'm going to push this out. See. So there goes the front side. Okay. 
as far as I'm aware that looks like it should just be coming off oh there we go oh wow whoa, whoa. Whoa. oh my lord what just happened then the whole thing just literally came away okay so it just needed lifting up and away so basically the two screws there secure it down there the top screw there was not needed at all I don't know what I've done put that down not sure what I've loosened off there but I cannot looks like it's just securing the, the front here I don't know because that what a bizarre assembly so anyway in the interim so that was quite interesting we'll put that back in there for now since that's literally done nothing for us okay that's done so I'm next going to remove these tiny little Phillips heads from there and we'll get this barrel and hop out one two and there is our barrel and hop now you greasy the barrel is oddly spotly, spotlessly clean that is with the barrel fully the hop unit fully turned on it was hopping 0.25s long before it got to full um, hop so that is fairly decent not a lot I can really say about that it's just bog standard hop unit I can't figure out how this is all housed in there that feels like it should go out backwards out that way oh it does oh there we go there we go right okay so there's our metal outer barrel housed inside this plastic framework we've still got then a metal handle that doesn't want to come out and considering that there's a pin through there for the hinge of this flap I'm guessing I possibly might need to pry this open to get this handle out if I wanted to but that is um, how that all goes together so I slide that back in reassemble that back together now as you print it back in it's not far enough yet there are little lugs and latches that go together there we go and it meets marries up like that that these bits here sitting together and this has come out far enough then we've got the front side that needed to come off by the looks of it yeah would have needed to come off to allow that assembly to come out of the back and then the muzzle brake on top so we know when we reassemble that what we're doing with that come back to that shortly we looked at the barrel the um charging hand assembly literally just sits hooked in there and comes up and out how bizarre this is um, in terms of the uh, stock if you do want to remove the stock there is just one big beefy bolt there you remove that and this stock assembly will come off in fact do you know what in the interest of interest let's let's do it and it literally just pulls off so it's got a square latch on the back and a screw there just keep those together that now is getting a little bit loose those are the hop screws keep those out of the way for now uh, so we're going to go to the little flat head on the bottom here undo that we've got that is wow that's just literally finger tightened and not even tight tight just somebody's wow okay put that to one side and lift that up now that is the teeny tiniest little AK sort of cam I've ever seen now that is very specifically tiny on purpose I don't know if that's hooked in from inside or not let's get my needle nose pliers nope and what that is 
is a little square bit that went in it should go there's the two flat edges are the top and bottom of that so i'll have to remember that when that's going back together and now the pistol grip should come away there goes the pistol grip quite nicely made actually and here is our gearbox famous last words actual moving so it looks like there is actually a pin here that comes through to this side so i'm just gonna have a go knocking that out of camera so the pin is two different shapes it's got a thinner end and a thicker end so the thin end is this side the thick end is that side now it should all come out making sure i'm being careful uh, the motor doesn't seem to want to go there's the selector come out of the way the motor doesn't actually fit through so i'm going to have to remove the motor first so let's get those motor screws out how bizarre that's one Those are quite long, so keep those safe. That disconnects. That allows the motor out, the gearbox out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the red wire. There we go, and the black. There we go. Get that out of the way. So there's generic motor. There's our wiring. So we have got a bit more like a traditional AK um, selector based cam, our little cut off there, put those to one side. We've even got an AK based selector plate and selector cam on this side. Okay, so I'm just going to remove that. So I'm just going to remove that because we need this off to get in there. Those are the metal bushings, but are they actually, um, put that through there. That with there, that with there. Are they actually bearings as opposed to bushings? We will find out. Next thing we do is I've just pulled on that little tab there, this one here, just to get it off. It does look like there's some dry, not nice grease in there, and we need some sort of torx bit. I'm gonna go and say it's an eight. It is an eight. And guess what? None of these are very tight either. Noticing this reoccurring theme here. Right, so. Tiny little one. Oops. A little bit longer one. Same size. There we go, same size again. So we've got the screws out, just need to remove this plate, which didn't need any pressure at all. This button should come forward and lift up and out, and it does. Now I just need to get a screwdriver in the back. Even the cylinder's not rotated to allow the proper access to the vent. But then right, so let's get a little flat head. There we go. So as I start prying it open at the back, I'm just going to slide this in to the spring guide in the back so that I can keep the spring and everything compressed. So there is our linear spring and plastic spring guide. That is some rather dry, wow, that is really dry looking grease. That is caked on there that that is going to need a full 
clean and restore, but not today. But not today. Now let's have a look. There is, do you know what? I did think it didn't sound too bad from the shooting. There's shims in places. Now let's see. They are bearings. They are actually bearing based bushings in the gearbox shell. That is not expected, especially considering the amount of like this old school Chinese white plastic parts that are in here. I wasn't expecting those to be bearing based bushings in there at all, um, which just help everything spin a little bit nice and smoother. So I'm just gonna lift the compression system out. Um, so we've got a plastic air nozzle my calipers digital measuring calipers are no longer working so i can't tell you what that is uh it's i mean that's not horrific oh wow and it's metal toothed as well half half teeth it's not horrific there is air leaking around the the o-ring but not you know it's not terrible i've seen worse air air compression and other, other things with the nozzle on i'm not expecting any better still some compression in there the spring strength suggests to me that you know the spring is doing the the real heavy lifting there that the compression is inconsequential and uh, that is quite surprising other than that standard trigger standard uh, version 3 gearbox uh, innards the shell i suspect might be partially proprietary it's like earwax this grease um a bit there Based on this thing, I don't recall this being, thing being on an uh, an AK gearbox, a version three gearbox. Those impressions look like somebody's had a screwdriver on it, bashing it, or something to try and tighten it up, or something. I don't know. Um, so, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bin this now and put an, another spring in as part of the reassembly. So, I've got here a replacement spring that I'm going to put in and hopefully make this UK suitable. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my um, air nozzle on the cylinder head like that. I'm going to make sure that the piston's lined up in line with the tappet plate. I'm going to hook the spring on to there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the spring onto this lug. These lugs here sit on the lugs, uh, lug holes, sit on these lugs in the front of the casing. So I'm just going to do that now. So I'll hook the spring on the little post right at the front there. And then I'm just going to done it again rotate that round that grease is awful um, I'm just going to pull this assembly oops came off there we go right so what I'm looking for here is making sure that this spring is right down on this post here that's important I'm making sure that the cylinder is flushing its gap there I'm going to square that off so that this vent is clearly in the opening there this is springing backwards and forwards and I am happy with that the grease is Bing in. Um, so next thing I'm gonna do, anti-reversal latch them. It needs to go in. So it's a tiny little latch and spring. And what it does is that little arm here pushes it into the way of the gear so that when the gearbox finishes a shot or you let go of the trigger, this stops it un unwinding and to reverse a latch. Um, which would give you a bit of a weird noise. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna drop it in its hole just here like that i'm going to pull it back like that and hold it open with my thumb and then i'm just going to drop that gear in place and wind it back and i should be able to wind the gears like that to see that these teeth are moving that way that says that it's all moving right i'm now going to compress the spring in the pistons on its runners compress the spring in now this is where a version 3 gets tricky particularly when there isn't uh, a quick release system so i've got that in there I've now got to bring this in on top and I'm going to start at the front and roll it backwards. And I've got to this stage now. Now what I'm looking for here is that the trigger, there we go, is now clicked in its place. And then the three gears might just need a screwdriver in down in these holes to just move them about a little bit. And what I'm looking for here 
there we go the piston had just rolled slightly I could tell because the the two sort of teeth in here weren't showing properly i've just put it back in place now the gearbox has gone back flush so i know everything now is back in order so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to slide that top retainer clip on it's not going to do an awful lot because i can so easily remove it but it's enough to just get started i'm going to drop the front um screw in first again these are tox 8 screws making sure that's tight next one Next one. Next one. I think even the um, hair nozzle, I don't think AKs traditionally have the lower nozzle. I think that's like an M14 -y style. Right, so. Those screws are all in there now. I can drop the button back in at the top and push it back. And I've got the little gear clip there because I don't want that gear exposed and left exposed when it goes in. Now, just looking round, next thing to do is bring back the selector cam. So I'm just gonna flip that over. That button can go back in whenever. So this gear I'm gonna drop in this side and those teeth, when it gets there, There we go, I missed. There we go. So those teeth all need to marry up like that nicely. That is how it should go. It looks like there is one extra tooth on here than there is on there. So that's how that goes. I'm gonna flip this back over. So, yeah, that's right. So we're gonna test this in a minute. Um, next thing I'm gonna do, is I'm going to bring the other half of this back in, which there is shit basically the each I'll show you each bit only has half of the sort of the the gap the space for the screw, so you know if you've got it right or not because the the space should look right uh, because the two halves have met back together. Tighten that down. Just make sure that's still on there. Come on. Hmm, I just wonder if that should be a further tooth on. We'll check that out in a second. So next then, I've got this weird cam, which I'm guessing at the start at the top there. So this top gap like that. And that sits on there like that and i have missed out i'm just going to drop lift that off drop that in place there i want to roll those teeth and bring this down and then that can go there we go so now if i put that back to safe so that is safe i wonder if that has to go a little bit further on or is that enough oh that was too far it was too far. Right. No, that's okay. Right. So that should be safe there. Yep. And then as that changes, it's quite stiff. We've got auto and single at the end there. That's good. We'll leave it sort of about in the middle. There we go. In fact, push it more that way. There we go. Now, I can now drop it back into the body. So I've got our body back in. We're just going to drop that in, feeding the wiring down. There's actually loads of room in there for it all. Now that selector system should be quite safe. So what I'm going to take this chance to do is I'm going to put this pin back in. So we've got the thicker end. It's going on this side. That's just going to help to... 
locate that, secure it all in place, nice. This coil was already here, so we're going to bring the motor in. There's the motor, and we've got this little sort of angular latch at the back. That's going to go on there like that. I'm going to bring the two screws back in. Screw those in. One. Again, if you're having to force these in, it means you, you're ruining the thread. Go back until you get the click and then go forward again to make sure that you're in the thing. Looking underneath then, I need the red one. Goes to the front there and clicks in place. Sits in that gap. The black one sits on the back terminal there. It doesn't matter which way round, if the red's there or, you know, provided that the wires are going to the correct thing so the red to red and black to black otherwise you're gonna your motor's potentially going to try and spin the wrong way then i'm going to slide the pistol grip up and on i'm going to put the screw in but what i'm not going to do is i'm not going to tighten it too much i'm just going to tighten it loosely just until i've got the selector in and then i can tighten this down not that it was tight in the first place but That one. Just loose. Perfect. Now I'm going to bring the selector plate back in. Wherever it's gone. There, look. And my little cam. So the little square cam. Good catch. So the two flat ends of it, hopefully you can see that, need to go like that. That needs to sit on top like that and then the screw comes in and I can see that that is moving the selector like that I've got safe at the top trigger trigger tighten that down that's nice and secure perfect this is going great thankfully um, we'll bring the stock back in now so that's literally just going to drop onto there we're going to bring the screw back in and I'm pretty sure it was a top 15 it is tighten that down That's that done, pull that down, swing that open. Right now, for all the craziness. Okay, so we'll put that button back in for now. That can go on there a little bit, that helps retain the button. Put that down. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these two screws back in here, seeing as they absolutely did nothing for us at all. That's that one in. That's the front side post, so that's just going to slide on like that. I'm going to get the pin. I'm just going to. The teeth were on this side. I'm just going to knock this in off camera. Front sight post is now in. We can now put the muzzle brake on. I'm just going to start that going back in initially. And then I'm going to put the barrel in and then finish the job with that. So the barrel goes in and secures into there with those two little Phillips heads. One. It does look like it will accept standard AK hops. You're just going to have to possibly 
use the adjuster off um, catch off here off this one to uh, use it properly that's two that's in so we've got the screws to do underneath there when it goes back together and open that up so this wiring drops down into that gap so I fed the wires down into that gap the hop unit goes into the front of the body like that and that's lined up with there nicely so I can screw those two screws in now there we go it's pulling it down there we go there's the other one so the there are the two screws are slightly different lengths by the look of it and the front one's a little bit shorter than the back one uh, because I've just put the back one in and I noticed that this whole assembly came down slightly to meet um, the, the screw but it is just held on by those two screws uh, feed that back in there not that I don't know why I keep closing that because it's just going to fling open so the last thing then for us to do is we're just going to hook the door in there I'm going to push the button back I'm just going to run the button onto the end there of that rod oh, I'm going to have to like release the front to get that back on right okay let's release that then one go let's wiggle that forward a little bit oh. wow okay let's try that again so everything's there that's what happens when he's trying to do it floating in midair right Put that on. And now, as this comes back again, okay. famous last words. I've just gone off camera while I just wrestle with it. There we go. There we go. And those are lined up. Drop one in. try that again so all I'm doing here is keeping it all compressed to the back there we go that's now purchasing in there and tightening down that's one that's two excuse me there we go and that's it we are done and dusted that goes under there clips on at the back so 
I hope you've enjoyed that. It's been a little bit of a weirder one, that one, uh, but I've enjoyed it immensely. I have learnt quite a bit about that. Uh, please remember to like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.